Welcome back, everybody, to our Sunday School series in the Gospel Project. We are going to be looking at a lesson today entitled, Jesus Walks on Water. Matthew 14, verses 22 through 36, tells us an amazing story, but it ends with an even greater confession. This stunning miracle rendered an even more stunning confession from Peter and his shipmates that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God, a confession that must also be ours today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord our God, our Savior, thank you, Lord God, that you sent your Son Jesus for us, that he is the Son of God. Help us as we learn in our lesson today in the confession of the disciples, Lord, that that we would make that confession real in our own lives. Lord, help us as we go through this lesson and learning about trusting you in all things. Help us, help us, Lord, to trust you more fully in everything that we face. Help us to learn and grow and be challenged. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, like I said, we'll be in Matthew chapter 14. We're going to be starting... With the first few verses, um, well, starting in verse 22, um, verses 22 through 24, the first few verses of this, this story, um, this account is actually the second in a set of miracles from Jesus. In the previous session, we saw his feeding of the 5,000 with only five loaves and two fish, a miracle that appears in all four Gospels, by the way. The second miracle took place on the Sea of Galilee later that same night and appears in three of the Gospels, in Matthew 14, Mark 6, and John 6. We're going to be looking, of course, at Matthew 14, starting in verse 22. Let's read that. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountains, uh, excuse me, on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. Notice that Jesus had sent his disciples in a boat to the other side of the sea. Some of them, of course, were seasoned fishermen such as Peter and others. But to be in a boat miles from land in the midst of a storm was still unnerving, still could be frightening to the core, no matter how much experience one had. Notice this also. Jesus sent them into that storm. But he is always, always sovereign over all of life's circumstances. He is always in control. It must be noted that Jesus purposefully removed himself from the crowds in order to pray. Another lesson that we can get from this, this event. Twice in Matthew chapter 14, Jesus retreated from the crowds to pray in isolation. What can we learn from this pattern in Jesus' life? First, if our goal is to look and act like Jesus, then spending time in solitude with the Father in prayer must be a priority in our lives. And second, the Christian life is to be lived both in crowds and alone. While our union with Christ cannot be shaken or taken away from us, our communion or our fellowship with Christ waxes and wanes, comes and goes, stronger and weaker. If we want to commune with the Lord, we must spend time with him in prayer. Prayer is nothing less than a confession of our neediness. When we pray and seek the Lord, we recognize him as the giver and sustainer of life. We recognize that he is with us in all of life's circumstances, such as this storm that the disciples found themselves in. We need him every hour. We need to stay in prayer. Let's continue the story in Matthew 14, 
reading verses 25 through 31. And in the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus was not riddled with terror at the winds, nor did he tremble at the height of the waves, because he was the one who spoke the waters into being. He is the one who set the water's boundaries. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 1. Jesus' command over every drop of water showed that he truly was and continues to be sovereign over all of life's circumstances, over all of nature, over all of events, over all that happens. He is sovereign. He is in control. In light of the true gospel narratives, this miracle is not surprising. In other words, after all the miracles we see, after all the work we see Jesus do, this particular miracle doesn't surprise us because we expect it of our Lord, our, of Jesus. What is surprising, however, is Peter having the courage, asking and obeying in faith, stepping out of the boat and walking on the water himself. That may be a little surprising to us. But then Peter made one wrong move. Peter's mistake was taking his eyes off of Jesus and placing them on his obstacles. Taking his eyes off of Jesus and looking at the wind and the waves, the problems around him. Peter's error came as his eyes took notice of the wind gusts. At that moment, he had greater faith that his obstacles would overtake him than his faith that his Savior could rescue him. While Peter's mistake seems obvious to us, we would do well to learn from Peter when we find ourselves in moments of despair, sorrow, worry, or fear. Lord, save me, is the cry of one who knows that he cannot save himself. I see posted on Facebook all the time statements like this. I got this. I am strong enough. Trust in yourself. These statements are all wrong at the core. They are all short of the truth. Peter found that out in this situation. We are nothing on our own. We need the Lord's help. We need his strength always in everything, in every circumstance. Instead of saying, I got this or I'm strong enough, perhaps we should say, I can in Christ. <laughs> and our last section, the last few verses of this, this section Matthew 14, verses 32 through 36. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent around to all that region and brought to him all who were sick and implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. All that has taken place to this point in the story, that is, Jesus walking on the water, Peter's attempt at joining him, Peter's doubt, Jesus rescuing Peter, and the wind stopping, all of those things lead to an important result. The disciples worshipped Jesus. Their confession that Jesus truly is the Son of God 
is the same confession of the church yesterday, today, and forevermore. Whether or not we make this confession in our own lives is the most important thing about us. My friends, it is the most important decision that you will ever make. I know if you've been watching or listening to my lessons, you've heard me say that more than once, and I will repeat it until I'm no longer on this earth that accepting Jesus as our Savior is the most important decision we can ever make. Your eternal life depends on it. And if you have never made that decision, then I, I say please make that decision today. Don't wait. Don't delay. Well, after they had landed in the region of Gennesaret, all of the sick were brought to Jesus, for they knew that he had the power to heal. In response to who Jesus is, we must worship just like the disciples did. And like the men of that region, we must tell others about him. For we have come to know Jesus not only as the one who heals the physically sick, but also as the one who, through his life, death, and resurrection, can heal the spiritually sick, including ourselves. We have come to learn that he can save us from hell, save us from sin, and save us to join him in heaven for all of eternity. And we need to tell other people about that. And again, if you have not made that decision to do that, please do so now, even as we pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, wonderful, precious Lord, our God, Lord, you gave everything to come down to this earth to save us. Lord, I thank you that, that you have enabled us to know you, to experience you through Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that everyone, in the sound of my voice now, that has never made that decision, I pray that they would put their trust, their faith, their belief in Jesus as their, as their Lord and Savior, believing that he died for them on the cross for their sins. And believe in that he rose again from the dead to give us life eternal with you forever in heaven. Lord, help those of us who have made that decision to share that truth with others so that they too can know you and be saved. Lord, thank you for the power that you have in our lives. You are sovereign. You are in control. We put our complete trust and faith in you. Forgive us for our times of doubt. Help us to trust you more fully each and every day. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.